The MTV Video Music Awards were held Sunday night. If you watched the show, you probably are wondering what the heck happened to accepting your award and just saying thank you. Where did that famous play them off stage music go? The program hosted by Miley Cyrus in barely any clothing was more reality show than awards show. The show opened with Nicki Minaj and Taylor Swift singing Taylor's hit song, Bad Blood. The pair had a well-publicized spat on social media about Minaj not receiving a certain nomination for the VMAs, and Swift thought the rapper was aiming criticism at her. It was all love as the pair performed together. While accepting the Best Hip Hop Video Award for her song, Anaconda, Nicki Minaj proceeded to take a jab at Cyrus over a New York Times story in which Cyrus appeared to side with Swift in her past beef with the rapper. Minaj said during her acceptance speech, and now back to this B, that had a lot to say about me the other day in the press. Minaj gestured at Cyrus. Cyrus seemed to take it in stride, responding, hey, we're all in this industry, we all do interviews, and we all know how they, the media, manipulate stuff. Then she congratulated Nikki. Taylor Swift gave a nod to the now infamous VMAs incident from 2009, when Kanye West rushed the stage after Swift beat out Beyonce, proclaiming that Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. On Sunday night, Swift was there to present West with the Michael Jackson Video Vanguard Award, Taylor called Kanye her friend and joked about the incident. Then West took to the stage and thanked Swift and things quickly went left. Kanye spoke uninterrupted for what seemed a lifetime, pausing over and over to find his words over the aftermath of interrupting Swift those many years ago. He said bro a lot, but mostly Swift, West rambled while Swift and the rest of us stood there looking perplexed. He ended his speech by announcing, and yes, as you probably could have guessed by this moment, I have decided in 2020 to run for president. He wrote and directed the first Nightmare on Elm Street film, helmed the first four Scream movies, and guided Meryl Streep to an Oscar nomination for Music of the Heart. Wes Craven, the famed maestro of horror, died Sunday after a battle with brain cancer. He was 76 years old. Celine Dion made her return to the Coliseum at Caesars Palace after a year hiatus. The Canadian singer-songwriter left her sold-out residency on the Las Vegas Strip last year to focus on her husband, Rene Angelé, and his ailing health. Angelé is battling throat cancer. Celine Dion has sold almost 250 million records over her 30-year career, earning five Grammy Awards, two Academy Awards, and seven American Music Awards. Here's one back-to-school photo Harry Potter fans wouldn't mind seeing posted on Facebook. The internet was thrilled when author J.K. Rowling tweeted on Tuesday that it was a special day in the Potter family. Yes, Harry Potter's older son, James Sirius Potter, is apparently enjoying his first day at Hogwarts. Fans of the novel Deathly Hollows are familiar with James and his younger brother, Albus, from the epilogue of the book. The tweet was, of course, met with glee from Potter devotees. Muppets star Kermit the Frog has wasted no time moving on from his breakup with longtime girlfriend Miss Piggy and is now dating an ABC marketer named Denise. Kermit and Miss Piggy were together for close to 40 years. Kermit is producing Miss Piggy's Up Late with Miss Piggy, the show within a show of the Muppets. Apparently, Miss Piggy has engaged in diva behavior on set. A source confirms Denise will also appear on the Muppet docuseries, which premieres September 22nd at 8 p.m. on ABC. That is your entertainment this week, and I am Alicia Cook.